Welcome to Klagemauer TV. Today again, the latest coverage concerning the unrest in East Ukraine. For months, thousands of people from cities in eastern Ukraine have been taking part in demonstrations to establish a referendum in the country as supporters of a federalization of the Ukraine. In response to the unrest arising in East Ukraine involving building occupations, the illegitimate interim government in Kiev passed a Titan penal law against separation and treason in a special meeting on the 11th of April. We reported details in a media commentary from April the 12th, 2014, on this same channel. The Ukrainian Secretary of State, Arsen Avakov, repeatedly gave the building occupants an ultimatum, but the pro-Russian demonstrators allowed the time to lapse without reaction to the demands of the administration in Kiev to leave the buildings. As Ria Novosti has been informed from Ukrainian security agencies, the head of the CIA, John Brennan, was in Kiev for top-secret meetings on Saturday. This has been confirmed by the White House in Washington. Just after Brennan's visit, a special operation in Slavyansk was ordered by Secretary of State Arsen Avakov against the supporters of the federalization of the Ukraine, during which people were injured and killed on both sides. Ukrainian presidential candidate Oleg Tsayov notified still last Saturday to the TV channel Russia 24 that an entire floor of the Ukrainian Security Department building had been made available to the U.S. Secret Service. And he added that even Ukrainian officers had been denied access. Zayov had heard from many officers of the Ukrainian Security Service, SBU, that the U.S. Secret Services are taking an active part in all proceedings in the Ukraine. We summarize. There are reinforced activities of U.S. Secret Services going on in Ukraine. Also, the activities of American mercenaries in the country have been confirmed. Yet in complete distortion of the facts, the European Union representative of foreign affairs, Catherine Ashton, again called upon Russia to pull out troops from the Ukrainian border and cease with any other actions leading to the destabilization of Ukraine. The actual approach that Russia is taking speaks a completely different language. Despite all the sanctions and the increasing isolation of Russia, Putin is obviously still striving for a diplomatic solution. At the explicit request of the Russian delegation, the UN Security Council still met Sunday evening in a special meeting concerning the Ukraine issue. The Channel 1 of the Russian news broadcaster reported on Monday the 14th of April at noon the following. When the ultimatum from Kiev was made public to those demonstrating, Moscow immediately tried to stop the bloodshed and issued another ultimatum. If the Ukrainian government should take violent measures, the planned meeting on Thursday in Geneva of Russia, USA, European Union and Ukraine will not take place. Here also, it is very clear that the Russian government is seeking a diplomatic solution of the conflict and is not threatening to send troops and invade. The Russian UN ambassador, Vitaly Churkin, commented the statement of the U.S. representative that the situation in the Ukraine has been provoked by Moscow as follows. Some, even here in this hall, persistently do not want to see the true reasons and origins of the events in the Ukraine. Continually, they are looking for Moscow's hand in what is taking place in southeast Ukraine. That's enough. It's really enough to spread rumors that we had deployed a large amount of troops and military to the Ukrainian borders and that we sent entire departments of agents into the country to coordinate the actions of the protesters in the Ukraine. It is time to understand that the people in southeast Ukraine are highly u concerned about their future. They do not want anyone to force their will upon them. Jokin continued, I quote, the Western Maidan sponsors, as well as the USA, which are behind them, must be held responsible to rein back the persons who are under trusteeship and force them to disassociate themselves from extremists 
and stop the operations of the armed forces against the Ukrainian people. Ladies and gentlemen, don't these statements speak a clear language? Who are the actual war -wongers? Who is responsible for all the victims? After all we have presented to you today, please form your own opinion. Until next time.